I'm Brian Alvarez. I'm a graduate student at the University of California, Berkeley, and I research the, uh, the brain mechanisms involved in synesthesia. So I'm in the field of cognitive psychology, and what we do in our lab and what I do with my research is study both uh, the psychology aspect of the brain and the mind, which is understanding your perception of the world, and also the neuroscience side, which is understanding how uh, how your perception of the world is represented inside of your brain. So synesthesia, the word itself means a blending of the senses, so a synthesis of sensation, synesthesia. So the definition isn't perfectly clear yet. It's really hard if someone asks in my synesthesia to just say, oh, yes or no, just based on a few different criteria. But these are a few things that really just give us uh, a sense of, of what to look for. One is that the synesthetic experiences are consistent. So if you have colors for letters, uh, letter A is red, maybe, let's say. It's going to be red your whole life. Um, if you have motions for sounds, or if you can point to January, something like that, uh, the sound you hear from this motion, or the location of January, or whatever it is your experience is, is going to be consistent throughout your life. Conscious experience is actually a really important one. So uh, it turns out that a lot of people, um, way, way more than you'd think, have things that look like synesthesia. They have experiences that, that seem to be a blending of the senses, uh, but they're not consciously experienced. And there's ways we can test for that in a lab, but only a synesthete has experiences that, that really are conscious to them. Automaticity, so by automatic what we mean is that when you have a synesthetic experience, it happens without you being able to really control it. It happens really fast. Going back to the colored letters, a synesthete might have the yellow color for C. And so when you look at C, even if it's printed green here, it automatically triggers yellow. And that's not something that you have to imagine. It's not like you're being creative or you know quirky. It's just that C is that color, and you can't help but see it. The last criterion here is uh, that there's something that triggers the synesthetic experience, and then the experience itself. So the trigger we call an inducer. So, so here the letter A is it going to induce the color red, for example. And that red experience is happening concurrently to seeing, to seeing this letter A. So we call the synesthetic experience the concurrent. No one really knows exactly what's happening in synesthesia um, in the brain. But a few theories are that everyone has the same connection, synesthetes and non-synesthetes. And in these synesthetes, these connections are uh, what's called unmasked or allowed to communicate, where in other brains they're not. And another theory is that synesthetes actually have more connections between certain areas that other people don't. So as an analogy, uh, you could imagine all the different connections in your brain being like uh, different pathways or freeways to get from one place to another. Um, there's big pathways like, you know, the freeway, and then there's little pathways like bike paths and walkways and side streets. Uh, one idea is that in synesthetes, there's, um, there's paths or there's roads between certain areas of the brain that other people just don't have, and so information can travel down those, those streets. And another idea is that everyone has more or less the same connections, but in the synesthetes, uh, certain roads are unblocked. You know, it's like the cops won't let you go through this road, but in a synesthetes brain, that road's open, and all of a sudden, these two areas of the brain can talk, and now you have this experience that no one else does. So no one knows exactly how many types of synesthesia there are, and there are a few different counts. One count, uh, there's a, a researcher named Sean Day, who has a list on a website of at least 63 different types of synesthesia, and some people estimate there could be well over 100, maybe over 150, and the reason is because we have at least five senses, right? We have, uh, we have smell and touch and taste and vision and sound, and any of these senses can be blended together in different ways. So if you have vision and taste, you might um, taste something and have a visual experience. You might see a color, or you might smell something and hear sound. But then there's other things, other ways you can have synesthesia, like motion might trigger a sound. Or even things that aren't the, the five basic senses uh, might involve synesthesia. So personalities, for example, are, are associations that end up being pretty common in the synesthetic world, maybe about 1% of everyone. People might have personality associations for letters or for shapes or for numbers, things like that. That's considered a type of synesthesia. 
Um, spatial locations are involved in synesthesia, so January might always be here. You might have the number four always in some location, so any type of sequence can be mapped to space. And so you can see how when you mix all these different types of, of sensations up, you can get lots and lots of different combinations.